uh, please welcome Sebastian Ritterbusch. He is a professor on the University of Mannheim. He is doing uh, podcasts on topic of mathematics called Modellansatz. And today he will be presenting uh, issues uh, with respect to routing for humans. The stage is yours. Thank you, Simon. Hello. Uh, it's an honor for me to be able to speak here at the State of the Map here in Heidelberg. And uh, I'm not at the Mannheim University, but the cooperative uh, state university in Mannheim, in German DHBV. Uh, and I'm here for Hutago. And if you look into your program, it says IX point information systems. Yes, uh, that's also correct, but the company decided to newly found this new company, Rutago, to emphasize that they really want to go further in uh, human routing and uh, provide solutions to this. So that's why it says Rutago over there. That's even more current than what was said before. So I'm going to talk about routing for humans. And first, I would like to introduce why this is an important topic. Obviously, um, most of you here are not born in a car or born on a bicycle. So the main way how we are moving on streets is obviously on the side of the street. That's what we tell our children, because it's more safer to do. And also, if they, we want them to cross the street, they should do this at traffic lights. Well, that's obvious. But if you look at the currently available solutions, they usually tell us to walk in the middle of the road, as if there were no cars. And this, of course, doesn't really make sense if we want to show where pedestrians should walk and also decide which way to go. Because if you're the one or the other side, it might be a completely different path you should take to get to your goal. And that's why we would like to use the OSM data for scalable and robust routing that really uses the available annotations that are there but have not been really used that well so far. Because the OSM not only has the largest footpath network, but it also has the largest footpath network that isn't really used because most of the footpaths are annotated with sidewalk equal to yes or left or right or both. And as these are not separate paths, most of the routing solutions are not using it, like GraphHopper. You have to change the routing graph before you can really use it. First of all, I would like to say, why did I get into this topic before? Because probably you haven't heard of me before uh, concerning routing. So I coordinated the Terrain Project, which is a federally, or well, was a federally funded project by the uh, Federal Ministry for Education and Research in Germany. It was a joint research effort of the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, as well as the two companies, Eichspoint and Papenmeier. And the idea was to support independent urban mobility, mobility of people with uh, low vision or blindness. There is uh, a saying, many no longer feel confident leaving their homes because they don't know what obstacles they encounter outside. So what were we planning to do? First of all, we had a group working on computer vision. They tried to identify where there are traffic lights, where is a crossing, if there are cars in the way or bicycles. Another group worked on system evaluation. What methods are there? Which, what devices can we use? What watches? What vibration belts? Another group worked on innovative braille uh, support and braille devices. Then, of course, we had some experts working on human-computer interaction, because having data or having sensor input and not being able to tell the person who is blind wouldn't work at all. So we are, we're also looking out on how we best tell the persons which way to go or where there are obstacles. And then, of course, there was the roadside aware safe routing, which we looked into this, and that's how I got involved into all this. And then we also had a group 
working together with citizens, how they might react if someone walks around with a camera or even having more knowledge on the surrounding by use of maps than other persons. Uh, generally, they were very open and really liked the idea. So in the end, everything should work as a solution on a smartphone because that's the supercomputer we're wearing with us all the time. So that's the best tool we can use to provide help for people with blindness or low vision. So what is the state of pedestrian routing? And as a first example, I would like to show you how a current solution, I just tried this uh, last week, uh, what path is uh, provided by a current solution going from the company to my home? And there you see, uh, well, it uses the same data it uses for uh, car routing. And again, the, the path it provides are centered on roads, but uh, some paths are even quite dangerous. For instance, it goes directly into a tunnel. I can assure you, pedestrians are not allowed in there, and I would never go even close because there's no space for pedestrians. They're forbidden there, and it's really, really dangerous. So you cannot rely on such solutions, which is, uh, by the way, it's the Apple routing, uh, to give you insight where to go. And also, uh, it doesn't give you any instructions, and I don't even want to start about where to cross. So um, it's not really helping, although it's the best thing we have so far. And blind people love to use the Apple routing or the Google routing, uh, where in this case, Google would have sent me over a hiking trail, which is wonderfully nice, and I love to take this road, but it's not really a safe path, and uh, uh, I wouldn't use it to go there. So let's look at a proper benchmark uh, problem. This is in Karlsruhe. I compared uh, what routes are proposed by Google and Apple Maps, and of course, the open road service, uh, which relies on Graphhopper and OSM. So first of all, uh, Google and Apple Maps, this solution, well, it's centered on the roads. It doesn't even think about where to cross roads. Um, yes. Generally, it's okay if you are able to find out where to go and uh, you feel quite confident walking uh, in the streets. By the way, blind persons do a orientation and mobility training. They are quite well uh, walking around in cities, but uh, actually, I think we can do much better. The open route service does it much better. It even knows where there's traffic lights. But as you look closely, you see, just at the point where there is a traffic light, it doesn't cross the street. It proposes, from then on, please walk on the middle on the road and uh, go where you want to go. And uh, well, it doesn't really help as well. But the reason is, uh, it just uses what's there. Before, there was a separate path. It uses it very well. But uh, from then on, uh, well, it can't do anything anymore. So what solutions are there? And there's an obvious solution, micromapping. And as an example for micromapping, I would like to talk about the Open Sidewalks or Access Map project, uh, where there were millions put into in the US uh, to extend the road network to having pedestrian uh, path as a first uh, class citizen in the open street map. And if you look into these maps, you see really all pedestrian uh, sidewalks laid out uh, separately with a lot of data, with all curves, everything in there. They combined a lot of different data sources, used a lot of computing resources to put all the information in there that's available. Wonderful, great. And you can use just the traditional routers to get the best results. But there are some problems with that. First of all, maintainability. Who is going to fix something if, if there is uh, a construction or anything? You have to connect all the dots. It's a problem with micromapping. You, there's so many things you can do wrong where you lose the connection and suddenly you get weird results in routing. These are things that are very troublesome. And the other part is, uh, well, this map you see there, if you just scroll it a few meters up, about 500 meters, suddenly there's a suburb or part of the city where they just didn't put data in. Suddenly, there's no path anymore. So if you use a traditional router, you're back to the old setting. It doesn't really know where to cross. And actually, I think we can do much better. Another approach um, was done by Schmitz-Ertl. 
uh, they did exactly what I mentioned before. Why don't we extend the OpenStreetMap programmatically to create a path network where our traditional routers can find the best way because we have the sidewalk tags. We know uh, it, it, it's written there. We know there is on the right or left side, there's a sidewalk. Why don't we extend the path there? That's what they did. They did a geometric extrapolation from the roads to the sidewalks where they, where they should be, either on both sides or right or left. Uh, then they also added orthogonal uh, additional path at crossings. Then they create a lot of new nodes. They connected the buildings. It's wonderful. It works exactly as we expected. Could be a wonderful solution for us. The problem is uh, why you don't see it widely spread. Uh, you have to do this transformation in the very beginning on all data because they do this geometric approach and you don't know where do the uh, line segments uh, yeah, meet each other. And so that's a bit troublesome. And uh, also they have to add, at least at their account algorithm, algorithm the, an individual cost function at transfer time, uh, transfer time. So this means if you want to have another mode of human locomotion, you have to do all the things again. Uh, so that's probably why it hasn't been used so widely spread. So what we are proposing, what we did, is what we call the transparent expansion, uh, which I would like to illustrate you on an example also in Karlsruhe, that's the Rudolfplatz. It's um, yeah, a place where trams, uh, where cars, and of course pedestrians meet. And uh, there you, on the one hand, have explicit uh, pedestrian path in green on the left side, uh, but you also have the information there is a sidewalk on the Rondelplatz, of course, only on the outside, not on the inside. And uh, it's an example where all different uh, methods meet. We have this micromapping because we have explicit path, then we have the sidewalk tag and so on. And we would like to get everything in there and be able to do some routing on that, um, but do it in a way that we don't have to transform the whole world before. Um, so what we are starting with is taking the OSM nodes where all the different uh, lines meet and realize if there is a uh, well, connection of different roads meeting there, uh, then in this case three, we create three virtual new nodes. Actually, I, I drew them a bit apart uh, from the original node, but this is not necessary. At this point, we're just talking about the are other nodes maybe very close to the original node because we don't care where exact it exactly is because we're only talking about uh, connectability. Then we connect these new virtual nodes also with the original node because you might be starting or ending at the original nodes and then do we do the same to the outside as well which is still quite locally. Uh, we also generate the virtual nodes there. An important part here is we didn't do anything globally. If we are at a certain point, at this specific point in Karlsruhe, if we want to know what nodes are around for pedestrians, we don't have to look over the whole world and do all different geometric uh, computations there, but just work locally in a topological way and uh, create the new nodes. If we then really want to root there, then we think about where is the best place to put the virtual nodes. But that's just the second part which we can also solve locally. So the lookup is just locally, and that's why we can do this expansion transparently on live OSM data. And that's the difference to, do, to the approach uh, before, and why we can directly deliver this and use it everywhere. So what we have now is uh, this, uh, the re resulting uh, paths is a detailed roadside aware pedestrian routing. We have this virtual path network with all the roadsides and crossings, and um, we include all the information that was in the USM before and additional information about which path we are following along and which path we are crossing. So we suddenly have more information we can put into our decision which way to, uh, to choose. So the routing itself, the weight, the weights are getting much more complicated because we have so much more to choose from. Suddenly there's more information and uh, which we can use to provide safe routing, wheelchair routing, or whatever you can think of. Of course, in the beginning, we worked on uh, routing for blind persons, but of course it extends for more. So 
just looking at the benchmark problem before, which was here solved with our A star, we will use uh, the more efficient landmark routing soon. Uh, you see that the side works were used and the solution identified like uh, before, uh, as it is in OpenStreetMap, the uh, traffic lights, but then it not continues on the road, but uses the sidewalk information before. Before we had explicit path, we walked over the traffic lights and then used the sidewalk. Of course, it depends on the quality, but what we are trying to achieve is to get the best out of the data we have. So, it's not just theory, you can try it for yourself. Uh, if you go to the website rutago slash pedestrian routing, you can just, uh, you get a leaflet map, you can click on one point and then click on another point and you get the path that is computed by the system. Uh, sorry, it's limited at the moment for Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. It's just, uh, it's what the great Geofabric uh, gives us in a great bundle. Uh, but it's, of course, not limited to that. So we tried it on the uh, various other places, and uh, that's really what we would like to do uh, to extend it to more places. And that's something we will do. But so far, I talked about a technical solution, but actually, if we want to do routing for humans, we have to go even further because there is just not only one pedestrian routing. There's hiking, there are wheelchairs, there are blind pedestrians, there are the young ones, the elder ones. We have various modes of uh, e-mobility uh, and also multimodal uh, transportation. And all of these different methods have all their distinct needs. They have regional regulation, laws and habits and also the mapping quality, it's different at all different places and all for, diff for all the different modes. So for instance, I'm so jealous of the bicycles that have explicit paths. Well, it's something uh, we humans with, with, with legs or wheelchair, we don't have this so often. It's mostly more annotation based. And uh, so how can we cope with that? So the traditional approach is to create a program waiting, a programmatic approach for each of these modes. And that's why there aren't that many. So we talk with experts. Where should humans walk or blind persons walk? We create a model out of this and create a white box interpretation of this expert knowledge. But this also means we have an exact, we're making assumptions on the representation in the open street map. And that's why a lot of different approaches before that had solutions for blind people uh, routing said, okay, you have to change the open state map completely. Do all these tags in there that we need so we get the best result. That won't work. It's only a regional solution. Just as, you know, micromapping also only works if you have a group that really wants to support this and do this everywhere. But we need a solution for humans that live everywhere. So that's quite difficult. We, and I won't tell you how you should map. You try to get the best what you have there. So, uh, the problem is uh, either it's quite general or really difficult to update and keep it up, uh, keep it uh, to the state we have. So that's why I'm proposing that we put in statistical weights uh, based on this annotation combinations we have. And this way we can it directly based on the export knowledge in terms of proposed routes that are given to us and uh, we use as a learning database. We are not going to interpret or try to, to model the OSM to our needs, but we will try to identify what's the best way of finding routes that on the one hand fit what the experts say, on the other hand works with the open street map. We use an automatic and robust pattern recognition, well, it's machine learning, and try to exploit the mapping reality. Because there's one hand how everyone wants you to do the mapping, and the other one how it's being done and that there are regional differences, we have to face that, and we try to guess, get the best of it so it works everywhere. So if there are updates to maps or the OSM gets more accurate and more detailed, we try to cope with it by, uh, well, nightly relearning, and most important, as there is no human program in this all the time, uh, well, it's scalable to different kinds of locomotion, because if there's an interest group pro providing examples where to root and how to root, uh, we can, start the learning and find a way to uh, yeah, cope with that and get the results people need. And of course, we would like to use and we will use additional databases like the great accessibility cloud uh, of Sozialhelden, uh, which provides us with more information, especially for people with, um, yeah, 
uh, blindness or uh, impairment with walking. So, my closing remarks. First of all, what you've seen before, the solution supporting blind persons in their independent mobility, this is something that will be out there soon. We will have the uh, yeah, roads that were routing as well as points of interest in the surrounding and uh, computer vision to tell them where there are obstacles. But furthermore, so if you want to see it, just get to me after the talk, I can give you a live demonstration of it, how it looks like right now. But overall, and what's most important here for the state of the mat, we show that it is feasible to provide routing for true locomotion, uh, human locomotion, and also for various modes, and that we are robust with respect to various data quality, if there's micromapping or just a very general or even no sidewalk information at all, because humans should walk on the side of the roads, it's scalable, and uh, we also try to cope with mapping fallacies or contradictions. For example, the, the famous bundling problem is something that's really uh, tedious for us for, to solve. And also, I would like to recommend to you to see the talk by Marcus Lucas Smith, is the OSM data model creaking. It, he really nails, uh, hits the hail on the, net, uh, on the head what is going wrong. And of course, if you would like to do pedestrian routing better, have a look at the OSM wiki about the guidelines for best pedestrian navigation. And uh, well, later on the talk about uh, pedestrian routing in complex areas. So the idea is we would like to get the best out of the street map for pedestrian routing. And I would like to do this with you. And I'm open for your questions. Sebastian, thank you so much for your detailed insights. Do we have questions? Over there. Uh, thank you very much for the talk. I have a question about the uh, routing expansion you um, e explained. So my question is, does this go into the computation of the best route already, or you are just compute the best route in a traditional way and then say, okay, I want to find actually the description of the route uh, and give there the best uh, uh, pedestrian solution? Thank you for your question. Uh, if I understood it correctly, the question was if already the construction of the expansion already is about routing itself. And I can tell you, it's a great question. No, we are not doing this. We're, we're including all path. May they be reasonable or not. And that's also a difference to the approaches before. Because we want to have the new network we are creating independent of the mode of travel you are deciding to use. We think the point where you should put all the decision which path to take or not, depending on your condition, should be the waiting. So if there's a path that doesn't make sense, it gets horribly expensive, so no one will ever go there. But the path is created before, independent of which mode of travel you would like to use. And in the waiting itself, later on, it's decided then whether it makes sense or not. So there is, of course, more to decide on. But if you use the uh, uh, algorithm with heuristics, it doesn't really take you more uh, effort to have them in there, apart from RAM usage, because it won't take the, these ways because they are just too expensive. Up here. We have time for one more question, but there are five. So probably we have to offset a few of them later on. I think you were first over there. Thank you very much. Uh, I think the dynamic approach is very uh, innovative. Um, but what I was wondering, when you compared uh, the different pedestrian route services, uh, you are looking into pedestrian mode only. Is this true? Because uh, the open route service already has a wheelchair route profile that does this extension, as you said, uh, in the pre-processing step, which means that you're right that it needs a lot of additional uh, data to be stored in main memory. Uh, for that reason, the current version is available only for all of Europe, but actually depends only on the computer resources to do so. Um, the main problem is more the missing data, and uh, 
uh, how clever you generate these additional uh, geometries and um, we have not published it but it's uh, been done in the background that uh, this data that is uh, used in the um, yeah, about uh, sidewalks and so on is uh, uh, being used also for this wheelchair. Um, but then uh, the comparison, so, so to say, needs a, probably a slight adaptation because uh, it's the crossing of roads and so on is uh, already possible with that approach, but as I mentioned with that uh, disadvantage that you need to pre-process it in uh, beforehand. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the note. You're absolutely right. Uh, the Open Route Service also has a mode to provide pedestrian routing just as we have shown here, but it's not uh, available on the website right away. You have to uh, activate the mode and also restrict it in the space. And the point I wanted to make is um, what, what is available right now? Because I also mentioned the other solutions uh, and the, what other scientists worked on before. The, these ideas work. But if they are not available, there's a problem with them. In this case, there's not a problem with them. You could enable it at any time. But uh, we would like to also think about how do we have to do the, uh, the waiting. And uh, especially just for the blind, it's continuously I have to, uh, we have to adapt this and work on that. So these, this, this expansion is just the first step. How to use it mo most efficiently. That's the next problem we are on because we always find new places where the routing is not that great. Uh, where we have to change the weights, if it's possible at all on the, on the data model. And uh, so what we're aiming at is a solution that's available right now in the first step, of course, for the blind persons using the app, but also go further and research. And of course, we would like to do this with you together. So <laughs> we already had uh, quite some great discussions. Um, how to bring this topic further and support people that really need this data most. Since we're running out of time, please uh, find Sebastian out in the coffee break to ask further questions. And uh, for, to close, please give him a warm round of applause. Thank you very much.